Hello and welcome to the Trading Bell Show. My name is Maina Shenge. Today we have a power-packed show. Looking through Q1, we have had corporates releasing their results and many things happening across this Q1, including the pandemic. And of course, I'll be having conversations with Kwame Owino, the CEO for Institute of Economic Affairs, who is going to give a commentary on the state of the economy in the country, as well as Job Wanjohi, the head of policy, research and advocacy at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, giving a commentary as well on the state of manufacturing in this country. Then we shall delve into the discussion on the markets as well deeper with Kevin Gigi, equities dealer at Genghis Capital and Emily Keegan, clearing an operations analyst right here at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Many thanks for your valid company. Join me right now in the conversation. Many thanks for joining me, uh, Kevin, and uh, of course, Emily Keegan. Uh, and it's such a pleasure to, of course, take a look and try to demystify how the year is going along. Looking through, we have had just Q1 uh, close and a lot of uh, you know results have been released currently by some of the corporates that have uh, gone out and released them. But before we get there, I just want your general comment. How are we doing? Let me start with you, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you for having me, uh, yes. Maina. Yeah. So it's been, the year, quite, uh, the year started quite uh, okay, I'd say. Mm -hmm. We were witnessing the improvement from the second half of last year. But then again, uh, things are as they are now. Uh, the infection rates, as we saw, jumped to, I think, highs of 20 to 23 yeah. percent, uh, positivity rates, that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the stand measures that were taken by the uh, executive to contain the virus have now dampened the outlook for Q1. So it's, it's, it's not as... Uh, Things are not as they were in the second half. It's not an improvement journey. It's quite uh, gloomy for me, yeah. but who knows what tomorrow brings. Wow. <laughs> Over to you, Emily. Um, for me, I think uh, Kenyans are resilient. When you look at the numbers in terms of January, the reintroduction of the taxes, so um, investors had to adjust. But uh, we've seen um, like coming back to the market in terms of uh, the market activity, there's uh, some continuous improvement looking through Feb and March. So I'm thinking even with the introduction of um, these curfews now, uh, we'll just need time to adjust then mm -hmm. bounce back. All right, Emily, that's a good end in there. Certainly hoping that Kenyans are resilient. I don't know, I see Kevin not agreeing with you, Kevin. I really don't agree. Kenyans are, I think, fed up and tired. Yes. Uh, we've seen all the uproar on all the social medias. We've seen KUT, for instance. Yes. Guys are now uh, inside a full year of unemployment. <laughs> I mean, companies are still laying off yeah. guys. We've seen that in manufacturing. We've seen that in banks. Okay. We've seen insurance refusing to pay premiums. I mean, I, I can't foresee a sector that is, uh, uh, Kenyans are happy with, okay. uh, per se. Inflation rate, as you, uh, again, if you look yeah. at the general inflation rate, you're yeah. talking to levels close to double digits. Wow. You know, yeah. and I'm not talking about decimal points. I'm talking about almost 10 percent. Yeah. yeah. You look at uh, things about uh, uh, transport yeah. and fuel costs. We yeah. are up almost 20 percent. Yes. Food, we are yeah. up. We are up three percent. Yeah. I, I can't foresee any sector mm. where Kenyans oh. are now happy about. <laughs> Well, all right, it's good to be optimistic, and I love the fact that I, I don't want to choose where I'll fall in and let the viewers do that. But we had a conversation as well with the CEO, Kenya Institute of Economics, and uh, he had this to say as well, Kwame Owino. Uh, towards the end of last year, of course, we can't speak about the state today without the progress from last year's uh, first restrictions. Uh, towards the end of the year, obviously, there was uh, evidence that the economy was recovering in terms of growth was going back towards the positive lines by yeah. quarter. And then, of course, government introduced uh, the government introduced uh, the the new restrictions. Then, obviously, um, because of course the numbers were going up, the restrictions. So, obviously, there's going it's going to be a little bit more uh, much lower than before. So, it's clear that uh, with the new restrictions that the president announced, I think two and a half weeks ago, I don't know about two two weeks ago now, uh, many farms uh, took it as a shock. So, obviously, the farms that require workers to be in day by day. Uh, but if you say run a restaurant or if you run uh, an office where people are in close proximity, the shift system is back. If you're running a hospitality business, obviously tourism is affected. So a whole raft of many more uh, businesses are affected. Uh, and the early curfews, of course, also has, uh, has an effect. So it's, it's not too good. And you can tell from the feedback that many business people have been given to government that um, things are too good. And obviously, both from the business side and obviously from the, uh, from, uh, from workers and people 
would like to, to do the businesses. So it's not, it's not a good time. It's not the best of times. Rather. All right, there you have it from Kwame Owino, CEO of Kenya Institute of Economic Affairs. We also as well had a conversation with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers representative that is the head of research, policy and advocacy, and that is none other than George uh, Job Wanjohi. And this is what he as well had to say about the state of manufacturing looking through Q1 this year. Uh, the current state of manufacturing, I would say, it has been remained, remained resilient and sustainable uh, because we have tried to navigate uh, through the challenges that came through from March last year to date. Uh, we saw a depression of the manufacturing sector uh, between March and September last year, and uh, we were recovering back to where we were uh, pre-COVID uh, up to around December, January, uh, when we started recording higher cases of COVID and then uh, leading to the lockdown and the enhanced curfew hours about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so this has again has disrupted and uh, uh, Q1 uh, was better uh, compared to uh, uh, compared to other years uh, and also uh, the, the Q4 for last year was better compared to other years. Uh, but uh, I'm feeling like uh, Q2 is likely to be a, a, a bit low. And uh, what we require is government's uh, support and uh, probably fiscal incentives uh, like what we had uh, last year, uh, because you can see that the positivity rate at the moment is 22 percent plus. And we're talking of the death rates. Uh, we're talking of uh, uh, the case loads uh, is higher than, than than it has been before. Uh, and subsequently, this has not uh, exempted the manufacturing sector. So what we're looking at is fiscal incentives, like what was introduced uh, last year, a uh, corporation tax, and so talking of a, 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 a reduction of the pay, and many other measures that, are, that, that, that the manufacturing sector is looking forward for. All right, there you have it, Kevin and Emily. I don't know, I'll start with you, Emily. What's your sentiments as well, uh, listening through the two gentlemen and what they had to say? What's your sentiments? Um, it's true indeed that the cost of living is going to be high. Yeah. Um, looking at the fuel prices that now you're starting to see the ripple effect in terms of even uh, cost of bread. Now I can, I hear Superloaf is now five, five shillings more than it was in Q1. Wow. So mm. the cost of living is definitely going to be a bit high, even in terms of interest rates. Uh, consistently since um, towards the end of last year, mm -hmm. early this year, yeah. the rates on a weekly basis have been going up. Yeah. But I think we just have to adapt. We just have to adapt. And uh, mm -hmm. I want to believe even as we express ourselves as Kenyans yeah. uh, in terms of we need more accountability in terms of the funds used, um, it is part of adopting. It is part of not letting it put you down, yeah. adopting and trying to seek a way forward and being hard. Okay. That's the bit. All right. I, I still love the positivity. We need to try and see how to adapt. Kevin, um, your comments on the two gentlemen. I, I almost entirely agree with them. Yeah. And uh, if you heard from the gentleman from manufacturing side, yes. uh, things are gloomy again. Yeah. Uh, things are not as they were. I was just reading a report from uh, CBK, I think I mentioned it to you earlier, and yeah. I couldn't really wrap my head around the figures. Mm -hmm. For instance, they're talking about horticulture. Employment rate has shot up to 120%. Yeah? Mm -hmm. They're talking about exports recovering to 90, between 93 and 97%. Mm -hmm. I checked their uh, survey on the hotel industry, and they're saying, well, their employment has improved to 57%. Yeah. Bed occupancy rate, you're talking about 27 to 30%. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about 35% of uh, hotel owners uh, foresee uh, mm -hmm. uh, occupancy rates yeah. uh, rising to pre-COVID levels. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true that is. You and I don't know. Uh, Kenyans can judge for themselves. <laughs> yeah. But predominantly, the hotel sector right now is being uh, uh, dominated by local tourism. Yeah. So it's, it's a good thing. But now comes the lockdown. You've locked the five richest counties in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. So what that suggests is the only occupancy rates, for instance, in the hotel industry, we're going to see improve or remain the same are the occupancy rates in the zone, yeah. uh, the five yeah. counties. Absolutely. So what happens to the other, um, what, 42, 42, 43 counties? So for me, it's... Um, uh, yes, Kenyans are resilient. We've yeah. gone through, we had the pandemic, HIV and AIDS when it came. We have, we've had a few other pandemics, mm -hmm. including diarrhea, that kill more people than COVID. I agree. Yeah. It's not the end of the world, mm -hmm. but we need uh, the executive to really step up. 
okay. and hear the cries of Kenyans. All right. Yeah. Quite some strong sentiments there. And uh, of course, we agree generally that accountability across the board is needed. Let's come to now some of the players in the market. Definitely, we had uh, you know most of the players releasing their results. Uh, some are not very friendly. Of course, we anticipated that because we came from a year uh, that was unprecedented, and of course, there were profit warnings given in. Mm -hmm. I don't know what are your thoughts. Uh, uh, of course, with regards to the results that were released generally across the companies that uh, you know came public about this. Uh, let me start with you, Emily, again. <laughs> um, I think. The fact that some of it was expected yeah. to uh, because of the pandemic, the whole of last year, and how it had affected probably the banking, manufacturing, and there were some sectors that were affected in a positive way, mm -hmm. like telecoms. They made their sales. Yeah. So, um, some of these uh, results were expected, and I, from the look of what came out last um, towards the end of last week, mm -hmm. uh, end of Q1, I. It was fairly good, okay. considering the expectation of what we had gone through. It could have uh, been worse, eh? <laughs> Yes, it could have been worse. Right. The fact that we still have dividend being declared, yeah, yeah I think. All right, Kevin, your thoughts? I like the question because the results announcement, announcement for the full year 20 uh, actually agree with my thoughts on this. Yeah. Show me a single company that uh, uh, had an uptick in profits. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I stand to be corrected. Yeah. All the companies uh, listed had a decline in, in, in results, some yeah. in double digits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with Emily. It mm -hmm. was as expected. Yeah. And just to show you uh, what lies in the future, mm -hmm. look at the banks in terms of uh, provisions for bad loans. Yeah. yeah. Look at CBK numbers when they're talking about, uh, in Q1 especially 2021, when mm -hmm. they're talking about defaults, mm -hmm. or what we call the non-performing loans when a loan goes for three months without being serviced regularly yeah, it yeah. falls to a non-performing loan Absolutely. banks for instance equity and kcb had increased their provisions fourfold yeah mm -hmm. we are talking about north of 20 to 25 billion in provisions mm -hmm. what that tells you is in the foreseeable future let's talk about the next quarter yeah. we're not seeing these loans being serviced yeah. mm -hmm. yes we know the moratorium uh, for the one year kenyans were given to service their loans is came, we were given a, a um sort of a reminder that yeah. is going, coming to an end in June 3rd. So the question is, what will Kenyans repay their loans with come June 4th, yeah. considering they're in a year, a full year of mm -hmm. unemployment. Yeah. Some are in a full year of 50, 75% pay cuts. Yeah. What are they going to service their loans with? You know? yeah. So that tells you the, the number of mink loans are going to uh, continue increasing. Yeah. Look at property auctions, yeah? Open any local daily, four pages of property being auctioned. These are Kenyan properties being auctioned. Yeah, we absolutely. know a famous hotel here in Westlands that has been auctioned right now. People are talking about being auctioned in downtown Nairobi, you know, yeah. like spare parts. <laughs> my, my final question on this part would be generally looking through the sectors. I don't know whether, Kevin, there are some certain sectors that you can say these ones are, you know, are going to leapfrog uh, or some of them have not been affected. Uh, I don't know, in your own general view, are there some sectors you can point out and say uh, these ones uh, will still uh, remain resilient or others are already uh, you know, on their knees? Yes. Um, my favorite sector, weirdly, I've yes. always been a fan of telco and Safaricom for, uh, for that matter. Yeah. But I was just looking at the numbers recently, and one of my favorite sectors has now shifted to uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the agricultural listed uh, space, yeah? Yeah. you're talking about Kakuzi, Elimuru tea, they've, had, they've been quite resilient. And as we're talking right now, mm -hmm. I think I was talking to a friend yesterday, and it's a planting season. Yeah? Yeah. So guys are planting now maize and beans, and we're going to have a start in June and October, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So I think that sector, and I mentioned about horticulture, as well, yeah. forming all the broader base agriculture. Yeah. I think that sector has been resi resilient, quite resilient, and yeah. it's going to uh, to remain so, especially with the rains mm -hmm. uh, here in Nairobi and across the country. Yeah. If we're going to believe uh, the central bank numbers, mm -hmm. they're talking about an employment rate of 120% in the horticultural sector. I think that favors mostly uh, the Nakuru County, where I think uh, 75 or 80% of the fl uh, flour comes from. Yeah. So agriculture, looking at Kakuzi, dividends have been really stable, mm -hmm. which is quite nice, and that's what investors are looking for. Okay. But I would also give uh, a shout out to, uh, to the local banks. Mm -hmm. I mean, increasing provisions is a double-sided story. So yeah. one tells you uh, the foreseeable uh, non-performing loans yeah. in the near term, mm -hmm. but also it shows you the buffer they have towards that. Yeah. And that is to, prote to protect your, your, your investment as a shareholder and to protect your money as a customer with them. Okay. So 
I'd say mm -hmm. agriculture is my top. Safaricom <laughs> remains as well a top okay. spot okay. for me. Yeah. And banks. Yeah, so agriculture, mm -hmm. telco, yeah. my top spots. Mm -hmm. But banking stocks is something you want to look at this quarter. All right. Yep. Great. Emily, I don't know whether you have uh, a divergent view from the sectors in your own opinion. I do share the same sentiment with okay. Kevin. Yeah. Looking at even with the favor of rains. Yes. Yeah. It's a blessing. So we're looking forward to yeah. some uh, good harvest some and all Some bumper that. harvest. Okay. So yeah. for you uh, shareholders, for you investors, I, I think you have your go-to and look to stocks so that at least you can uh, be on the safe side. Right about now, we want to, you know, take a break, but uh, don't go. We'll be right back with the market analysis. Welcome back and there goes the bell, time for market analysis and of course our research analysts are still here to help us decipher now specifically how the numbers are doing and I want to start over with uh, a bit of a discussion on uh, some of the top gainers and what we are seeing. I can see we have I&M Holding, we have Sunlam Total, Bamburi and Williamson T. Let me start with the I&M Holdings and uh, probably you could also mention about Williamson T, uh, Emily, uh, why are we seeing this excitement? I think for the I and M, there's a bonus one for one. Okay. So for every share you hold, you get an additional mm -hmm. bonus and yeah. even a dividend declared. So mm -hmm. I think that is what is exciting the market or even investors about it. All right. Yeah. What about the tea? Are people taking a lot of tea? <laughs> yes, yes. I believe now the agricultural sector, as we had mentioned earlier, is doing quite well. Mm -hmm. So tea. Um, um, companies are doing well okay. in terms of even COVID, the uptake is quite good. Oh yeah, actually, uh, because you know, especially with the weather and the healthy eating, I mean, there's a lot of uh, that being taken in. Uh, Kevin, I don't know whether there, there are some uh, sentiments you want to give in within uh, the top gainers. We still have Sunlam Total at Bamburi. What would be your comments? I mean, I agree with Emily in terms yeah. of uh, when you look at Williamson. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, they're going to be quite resilient, if not better. Yeah. Um, other than the staff who are affected maybe by the COVID and all that stuff, and the penetration on those uh, tea plantation areas is not as high as in this zone. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's one of the reasons that advise the closing up of the five counties. Yeah. So that's good news for them. Mm -hmm. I think when you're talking about tea, it's also good to look at uh, the global auction prices, yeah? Because okay. most of the times, tea is not, uh, prices are not determined uh, at the farmer's level, okay. you know, at the company's level. Absolutely. So we have to look at global uh, uh, tea prices. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the best uh, 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 tea producers in the world, Brazil, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We saw quite some uh, challenges when it comes to roasted uh, dried tea mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how do they get it to, you know, the Western Europe countries, the American countries. We've seen there's a problem of short or a shortage of container, uh, containers for, fr uh, for fright, for sea fright. Yeah? Yeah. So that has really affected the price okay. and guys were now hoarding whatever they could get. Mm -hmm. And that's really working well for us because... Mm -hmm. um, Whatever tea, the markup in prices are going to be realized back home. So okay. I think for Williamson, it's uh, starting from the global, escalating it down. It's, it's really a, a good pick for that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think also a, a diversity of products in terms of tea, when we have now green tea, the herb, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, flavored teas. Some, some ginger yes, inside yes, and all that. Yeah. Yes, I, <laughs> I mean, think those are high yeah. margin businesses. And yeah. right now you walk in, it's not like five years ago, you know, I was growing up, we knew tea as tea. Yes. I think if you're bougie enough, then you could have masala <laughs> tea or, or, or ginger tea, you know. But now you walk in and you can get your There's jasmine. There's no red tea and, and purple tea as well. Right. Yeah, yeah. That. All right, let's yeah. jump into the top losers as well. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting names here. We see Cooperative Bank, I see Samir Group, Flim Tree, Unga Group. And I just want to start with you, uh, Emily, as well. I, I don't know whether there's a, uh, a name here that you want to talk about. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Unga. Yeah. The costs uh, in terms of a ripple effect of in terms of fuel yeah. for the manufacturers mm -hmm. that cascades back to the cost of even production, production yes. yes and even now the increase in price mm -hmm. and even the VAT um, uh, reintroduction to 16% yeah. I think 
that's what coming into place in terms of the cost of production. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know, uh, Kevin. Some sentiments on them on the losers. Uh, when I look at say the banking store like Coop, uh, Cooperative Bank, they announced a dividend for one shilling. Mm -hmm. The book's closure was that first March. That's mm -hmm. just roughly a week ago. Yeah. So it's it's understandable to see why it would be losing because mm -hmm. what happens uh, post book's closure and that's the for those who don't understand, book closure is the last day uh, yeah. that you can be booked to have the dividend. So yeah. if you're holding the stock by 31st March, you'd be booked to have the one shilling dividend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you had sold, then you might not get it. Yeah. So what happens to the share price? It's, it readjusts by almost as much as the dividend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the share price was, say, 13 and the dividend was one shilling post yeah. book closure, mm -hmm. you'll tend to see the share price tend to go around 12, oh. uh, 12 levels. Yeah. yeah. And maybe just to mention one other name that you'd mentioned. Um, uh, sorry, that was in the gain and that's Total Kenya. Yeah. Again, it goes to the point we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. It's good for shareholder to see that Total actually were uh, uh, doing quite well. They're mm -hmm. among the top uh, gainers. gainers. And they announced some solid numbers. Mm -hmm. They actually had a really good half year. I was mm -hmm. talking to uh, part of the management. They had a really good year. Okay. Partly because of lubricants, the mm -hmm. margins on lubricants and uh, those other things yeah. uh, out, ex outside fuel. Mm -hmm. And also because uh, the demand for fuel in the second half, I, I remember them mentioning, was almost more mm -hmm. than uh, the normal pre-COVID levels, yeah? Okay. So that was a really boost for them. But then again, mm -hmm. what does that mean for you mm -hmm. uh, when you're going to fuel your, uh, your, your car, yeah? <laughs> so yeah. it's good for you as a shareholder, but for you as a, as consumer. a consumer. Absolutely. Yeah. Emily, the index uh, look like they're going down. Yeah, and I think this is mainly after the announcement of the financial results. Yes. We looked at the different numbers now that... Um, almost all companies uh, had a decline in profits yeah. that affects and uh, the indices in terms of prices, the stock prices, you see some of them are, uh, the prices are were dipping towards the end of um, the, the quarter. Okay. Yeah. All right, Kevin, uh, maybe we could finalize this on numbers uh, with just the movers. We, I can see Safaricom, I can see uh, EABL, uh, KPLC, and of course, Equity Group Holdings. Uh, any attributes to this? You'll always see the movers uh, coming from the NSC 20, and those are merely the blue chips here, yeah? the top 20 stocks. It's mm -hmm. very, very rare to see a mover coming off the t top 20. We might have outliers here and there. Uh, I think, for instance, we have a Chumi. I mm -hmm. don't think it's an NSC 20 member. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, it's, it, it's understandably so. One, because of uh, investors will most likely, especially during these times of uncertainty, uh, uncertainties, yeah. stick to blue chips. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the top uh, top market cap counters. Mm -hmm. Foreigners, when they're looking at Kenya, they're not going to look at Mumi, as you know, uh, for liquidity purposes and all other reasons. They're going to look at the blue chips. So your banking stocks, your Safaricom, and your manufacturing stocks. So it's understandable to see them in in the uh, in the movers. Yeah, and of course, again. Thanks to the numbers that we saw, you're going to see some movements here and there. Great. Yep. There you have it, courtesy of the, of the numbers and uh, the analysis. Uh, and thank you so much for really helping us with this uh, particular big numbers, as we call them. Right about now, we get to Markets 101. So on Markets 101 today, we just want to really put an ear to what Kenyans are complaining about because there has been all this hashtag going round about debt, debt burden and all that and trying to really converse with the international donors. Uh, are they doing it to the right people? Are they not? And I want our analysts here who are experts as well to help us and understand really what's going down. So Kevin, let me start with you. Uh, are we on the right direction? <laughs> I'll, I'll try and echo the people's voice here yes. and uh, say, yes, I can understand the burden that uh, Kenyans are facing. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the executive come forward and say, you know, we lose almost close to 2 billion Kenya shillings every single day. Mm -hmm. So when Kenyans hear that and then go to the next end of uh, hearing more loans are being loaned to us, mm -hmm. then it goes to the debt burden that, the debt bu debt burden that they're going to face. Because yeah. the only way we can repay those debts mm -hmm. is either we raise our taxes yeah. or we raise our production. That means our GDP. Absolutely. With the pandemic, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, quite unlikely we do the latter mm -hmm. and do the earlier. Yeah. So Kenyans are speaking up and we are a democratic nation. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they're going to speak up in whatever avenue they face. Yeah. Lately, it's been the IMF, <laughs> partly because they're the ones who've been loaning us. <laughs> and it, it, when you look at the numbers, I mean, Kenya in the first three months of this year mm -hmm. has consumed more yeah. than eight months of the last year. 
yeah. just to put it in perspective. Yeah. IMF, I think the reason you're seeing Kenyans on most of IMF pages is because yeah. IMF have been the biggest uh, uh, donor to us. Yeah. Uh, and they're part of the Bretton Woods. So mm -hmm. the IMF is part of the World Bank. So if mm -hmm. you're going to combine what the World Bank and IMF have given us, yeah. I think it's close to 400 billion Kenya shillings. Yeah? Wow. And that's why I think Kenyans are taking the rage on IMF. But if Absolutely. you look at the numbers deeply, mm -hmm. we have Japan who've loaned us, we have Russia, we mm -hmm. have the EU, mm -hmm. uh, we have America. So yeah. a couple of guys who've loaned us. Okay. And debt is not bad. Mm -hmm. I'd like to tell Kenyans and just play the devil's advocate here. Yeah. Debt is not bad. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Kenyans really, uh, they're not vocal because they don't need the money. Mm -hmm. It's, I think, in terms of uh, efficiency yeah. and how that money trickles yeah. down to them. All right. <laughs> Emily, what's your sentiments on that? I agree with De uh, Kevin here in mm -hmm. the fact that debt is not bad. Yeah. It's uh, accountability. Okay. If I think our government was accountable in terms of we've borrowed this from these infrastructure projects, because you even see nowadays in, in infrastructure bond prospectors, mm -hmm. it's not really put in detail what's going to fund. It's yeah. just told infrastructure projects within this financial period. Mm -hmm. I think accountability, because previously we'll, you'll see this is going to roads, this is going to sewerage and water, infrastructure projects in that, such that even if it's time to seek accountability, it can easily be told these funds were channeled to this project and this is how it fared and this is what it's fetching. So accountability, I think, is the biggest question here mm -hmm. on, on government in terms of borrowing, yes, mm -hmm. but account for it. Because we want progress. Yeah. We, we are happy to see the expressway. Yes. We are happy to see the trains, yes. but it's important to see that these funds are being utilized as intended. All right. Maybe just a final thought yeah, on sure. to that here. Yeah? And I was looking at the numbers, and again, that can make you understand why Kenyans are very vocal, especially during this quarter. Yeah. And if you look at, uh, say, 2013, mm -hmm. our interest payments on debts, mm -hmm. yeah, public debt, yeah. was around 283 billion mm -hmm. yeah, per annum. Yeah. Currently, 2021, we are talking about 1 trillion and 15 billion. Wow. So that shows you, yeah, exactly. during the last seven years, mm -hmm. we've accumulated close to six trillion in debt. In debt. Yeah. And just servicing that debt, not repaying, servicing that debt yeah. is going to be one trillion and 15 billion of our revenues. Quite we are talking about a country well. yeah. with GDP shortfalls of more than 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Budget shortfalls of yeah. more than 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are just looking at, yes, the external debt. There's also the internal debt yeah. that we need to look at, yeah? yeah? We have, Emily has just mentioned, for instance, we just closed an IFB yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, an 18-year infrastructure bond. For those who don't know, an infrastructure bond is when the government wants to build a road, a dam, yeah. an airport, whatever, a school. They'll come to you and tell you, you want to build this school. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at around 50 billion. This, we are going to raise it. If you want to give us your money, you can give us. We will yeah. not charge you tax on interest. Mm -hmm. They're very attractive. Okay. But nowadays... The government is gangster. They tell you it's an IFB. We're not going to charge you tax. Don't yeah. ask us what you're going to do with the money. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. Wow. There you have it. I can't add a sentence on that. Let's go straight to your questions. All right, Emily, the first question goes to you, and it's what are future and forward contracts? These are questions from the SMS platforms. What are future and forward contracts? Uh, future and forward contracts are more of um, agreeing on a price of an asset today but delivery happens in a future date mm -hmm. a, uh, a future determined date okay. so you will find futures are more standardized and you'll find in more cases they are exchange traded mm -hmm. but you'll find the forwards more or less the same agreeing on an asset price today for a future date delivery okay. but now it's more of OTC trading like uh, between the two parties it's right. less standardized and um, you, it's upon the two parties to agree on uh -huh. how, in terms of quality of the asset mm -hmm. and such details. That's a loaded question. Thank you so much for that. And Kevin, there's another one here. What effect does the financial crisis have on the Kenyan stock markets? I think this is in general, maybe financial crisis, you could uh, probably figure out maybe what we are going through right now. Yeah. What, does, what effect does it have on the Kenyan stock markets? Thanks for that question. It's a good question. I think uh, the effects the financial crisis the, the, the uh, 
the guy, guy who asked the question just focused on the Kenyan stock market. I think so. But yeah. any crisis mm -hmm. usually affects almost the entire economy as a whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah? In different levels, yes, but yeah. the entire economy as a whole. Yeah. So we've seen, and I think we mentioned it early in terms of the uh, stock market performance, we've seen the indices lag or remain stagnant. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, the start of the year. Normally, it's supposed to be bullish past January. You mm -hmm. know, guys have come from holiday, guys are rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. There's new money coming in, uh, all the pension monies, the international guys are looking at us. Kenya had just been elevated uh, in the MSCI uh, Frontier 100. Yeah, mm -hmm. after Kuwait was upgraded, Kenya was elevated, meaning we get more weighting. Mm -hmm. Ideally, what that's supposed to mean is that we are supposed to see more investor inflow into the country. Yeah. But what have we been seeing? Mm -hmm. More investor outflows, yeah? Because, yeah. of course, of the uncertainty. One, we are a frontier country. Above us, there's an emerging market. Mm -hmm. And then we have the developed world, yeah? yeah. So if you if you are seated in the U.S. and you, inv uh, uh, you have diversified your portfolio and you yeah. want to cut risks, mm -hmm. the first place you're going to look at is your frontier countries here. Yeah? These are your third world countries. Yeah. So, and that's why it's, it's, it's not for um, anything we've done wrongly. It's, mm -hmm. it's a general trend when we have pandemics. So the stock market has really been hit. Yeah. I can say that for a fact. Mm -hmm. We've seen banking stocks, I think, being hit in double digits, and I'm talking about 30% or more. Yeah. We've seen also the telco trying to be resilient, but also facing strong headwinds, yeah? Absolutely. And coming all the ways from all-time highs of 39 and a half, now we're talking about 37 levels. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been dying. And even worse on the hospitality as well. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for those, and thank you so much for your questions. We will always try our best to give you the best answers that you can so that you can become a better informed investor. There you have it for the day, uh, and absolutely thanking you for your valued company. That's it here for the Trading Bell Show. See you next time, same place, same time.